So good morning and welcome to St Mary's Church in Port Stewart in the Netherwind ministry area. My name is the Reverend Julie Hubbard and I'm a vicar in this ministry area and it's lovely to welcome you here for our time of worship, a service of the word this morning. God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So let us worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. We meet in the presence of God, who knows our needs, hears our cries, feels our pain and heals our wounds. Almighty God, you fed your people in the wilderness and guided them by cloud and fire, giving commandments to order their lives. Give us eyes to see your purpose, perseverance to follow where you lead, and courage to know the truth that sets us free, that our lives may be blessed and your will may be done. Amen. And so we come to that time of confession, that time of making ourselves right with God. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only God. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandments greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Through Christ, let us offer our sacrifice of praise to God. Let our lips proclaim his praise. And so we're going to do that by singing our first hymn together. Jesus, think on me and purge away my sin. From earth born passion, set me free and make me pure within. Lord Jesus, think on me with care and love. Let me. Jesus, think on me, nor let me go astray through darkness and perplexity. 
Chapter 55, verses 1 to 9 of Isaiah, an invitation to abundant life. Ho, oh, everyone who first come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk, without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labour for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me. And eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you call nations that you do not know, and nations you do not know you shall run to you. Because the Lord your God, Holy One of of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord where he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and in righteousness their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them, and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to thee. Amen. The Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. Repent or perish. At that very time there was some present who told him about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. While those eighteen were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the other others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I've come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. For if it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Have you ever had a favourite tree? Perhaps is your house like an apple tree that produces the best apples ever? Or a shade tree that gives good shade on a hot sunny day? Or maybe it's some of those flowering plum trees with their pink blossoms in the spring. In our house we have a large willow tree with a characteristic low swooping branches. We had a tree seat fitted around its large trunk and it was somewhere I loved to sit with a cup of tea when I came home from work or somewhere to think and pray. Now people in biblical times loved fig trees. Fig trees could grow tall and leafy and then become shade trees. People could get out of the hot sun and rest and relax in the shade of their fig tree. 
In ancient Israel, you needed a fig tree in your backyard, both for shade and fruit, and you can imagine them taking a nap on a hot afternoon under the branches. They grow quite tall, as tall as 40 feet, four stories of a building. The Israelites not only love fig trees because of the shade that they received, they love them because of the figs. Figs like grapes and pomegranates are delicious, delightful and mouth-watering to the taste. And the primary purpose of a fig tree was not to produce shade, as nice as shade is. The primary purpose was and still is to produce figs. And if we were to look closely at a fig growing on the tree, we would see that the base of the fruit grows out of the branch. The connection is very close. Now Jesus taught that he was the vine and we were the branches. And when we are connected to Christ, we begin to bear much fruit. And according to the Gospel of Luke, Jesus was travelling from Galilee to Jerusalem. It was an 80-mile journey. And on that journey, some unnamed people came to Jesus and told him about two nasty disasters which had recently occurred. The first involved the notorious Pontius Pilate, who had been ruling Israel for four years and had been a monstrous, cruel ruler who put down riots viciously. And this Pontius Pilate had mixed the blood of Galileans that he had executed with the blood of their Jewish sacrifices. This was offensive, disgusting, revolting. And this was about as appalling as it gets for Pilate to have mixed human blood with the animal blood of sacrifices. Now Jesus had the ability to read minds and know what people were thinking and he said to them, I know what some of you are thinking. I know that some of you are thinking that these Galileans were killed and then their blood mixed with the blood of sacrifices because they were worse sinners than others. <coughs> Isn't that right? Aren't some of you thinking that way? Well, I want it to be clear to you that is not true. Just because people suffer a nasty, horrible death doesn't mean that they're bigger sinners than everyone else. It's just not true. Rather, when someone dies so suddenly and abruptly, so tragically and brutally, as those Galileans did at the hands of Pilate, it is time for you to think about your own lives and how you are living them. That terrible tragedy is an occasion for you to come to grips with your own death, with your own unexpected end. How are you with the Lord God? Are you ready to die suddenly like those Galileans did? Are you ready to meet God face to face? How are you with your neighbours? How are you with your wife, your family and friends? And while there is time, you need to repent, turn your lives around and come back to the Lord. Otherwise, you will die eternally. But there is still time for you to change your ways. And then the second disaster. Jesus continued, You heard about the tragic news of 18 people being killed when a tower fell over near Siloam, just south of Jerusalem. That was awful. Talk about tragic, a disaster, 18 men, women and children. And those 18 who died so tragically, were they any worse than the rest of the people who lived in Jerusalem? Is that why this 18 died? Because they were worse sinners than the rest of the town? No, of course not. They died in a moment, in a blink of an eye, unexpectedly. And we are to be ready at all times to meet our God face to face. Are you ready? There is still time to amend your ways, change your lives and become ready to meet God in a moment. Then Jesus told them a parable to explain himself more clearly. Jesus often follows a teaching with a parable. Jesus said, a man planted a fig tree in his garden. The man came looking for fruit from that fig tree. For three years he came looking for fruit. 
and he finally became frustrated with the tree and said to his gardener, I've been coming here for three years. Cut the thing down. And the gardener replied, No, sir. Give it another year to produce figs. One more year. Some more time. Some more space. Let me dig around the roots and put good fertilizer on it. If after a year it doesn't produce figs, then I'll cut it down. There's so much in this gospel. And what does it mean for your life and mine? Well, you all know that if you own an apple tree, you expect it to produce apples. And if it doesn't produce fruit, we all know what to do. We get rid of it and find a tree that will. We all know that an unproductive tree is a waste of time, space and energy. But the gardener says, hang on there a moment. Let's give it one more chance, more time, more space, more years, good water. Let's give it a chance. And that's what the parable is about for us. The Lord God wants to give us another chance, one more chance, another season, another year, some more space to live our ways in which he expects us to. Another chance, another moment, a period of grace that begins now to change, to live the quality of lives that God wants from us, produce the life of love that the Lord God expects from us. We all know that God created the trees to produce fruit. We know that God created you and I to be loving people and he expects us to live the lives of love for God and our neighbours. These are his expectations of us to produce fruits of love. It is all so simple. Your life may have been like a fig tree, providing shade for people around you, providing pleasantness for those who are your family and friend, and that is good. But it is just a secondary purpose. The main purpose that God created you and me is to produce fruit, the fruit of love for the God of creation who fashioned you in the first place. The Lord God created us because he needed us to produce fruit. And when you and I are attached to Jesus and his love, then there is still time for us to produce the fruit that God expects of us. Amen. Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving seeks, my comforter. Here in the love of Christ I stand
Worship together, we're going to say the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So now we come to our time of intercession. We are given the invitation to come to the waters and drink freely. If we keep refusing, then we can expect it to be withdrawn eventually. So, as we thirst for God in our lives, let us pray to him now. O Lord, we thirst for your meaning and your guidance in all that we do, in our work and in our worship and praise. Fill each and every one of us to the brim with your spirit, that those who we meet with are drawn to want to meet with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we look around us, we see massive amounts of corruption and double standards at play in the world, which not only damage the societies in which they are happening, but also have a knock-on effect around the world. We pray that those leaders who are allowing this to happen will see the error of their ways, and that the world will become a less corrupt and better place for all citizens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine and their leaders as they battle against the invading Russians. Be with those who have fled for their own safety and also for those who have left behind to defend the country. Be especially with those who have lost loved ones in this conflict and comfort them in their hour of loss. We pray that world leaders will continue to put pressure on the President Putin, that he may, they may be able to persuade him to pull his troops out of the country and to pay reparations for the enormous amount of damage that has been so needlessly caused and inflicted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the church and its witness around the world. Unfortunately, we're also seeing more cases of the harassment, persecution and even killings of Christians in countries around the world and in some countries which supposedly have freedom of religion as part of their constitution. Be with those being persecuted and let them know and feel your presence. We thank you that here in the UK we're able to meet freely to worship without the worry that many of our brothers and sisters in you suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the church in Wales and especially for our own Diocese of Monmouth. Be with Bishop Cherry as she leads the Diocese through the changes that are currently taking place. We thank you, Lord, for our own newly formed ministry area of Neverwent, and especially for Jeremy and his team as they lead us. Help each and every one of us, we pray, to play our part in this new expanded area, so that in time we will get to know the members of the other churches which have recently joined the existing ministry areas, so that we may all be better able to serve the communities which we live in. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, help us to thirst for the understanding, compassion and love which you showed when you were alive here on earth and which helps bind up wounds, supports the nervous and frail and also those who are afraid or imprisoned with their own fears. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we thirst for your spirit of life as we call to mind those who have arrived at the point of earthly death. May they, and also we in our turn, find the eternal refreshment and everlasting peace with you. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones and remembering in a few moments of silence any known to us personally or whose anniversary falls at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, although we don't always appreciate or show it, we thank you for your constant outpouring of your spirit to us throughout our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I came across this Lenten prayer from the 5th century Galatian Sacramentary. Grant, we beseech you, O Lord, that by the observance of this Lent we may advance in the knowledge of the mystery of Christ and show forth his mind in conduct worthy of our calling through Jesus Christ our Lord. Shall we join together in the words which our Lord taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went up not to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Cast your burden upon the Lord, he will sustain you. Creating us clean hearts, O God, renew a right spirit within us. Cast us not away from your presence, take not your Holy Spirit from us. Give us the joy of your saving help, Sustain us with your life-giving spirit. Blessed be the Lord day by day, the God of our salvation who bears our burdens. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So we come to our closing hymn now together. Spirit of our God, dear.
saved by faith and created in Christ for good works. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.